Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. A special welcome to any guests or visitors that we have with us. We're glad you're here worshiping up with us this evening. As this is also the service that goes on the radio and on TV and um, streamed online, we welcome all those who are worshiping with us there. Our theme for this weekend is He Lives, He Lives to Be My Good Shepherd. As this is Good Shepherd Weekend, tomorrow's Good Shepherd Sunday, we celebrate and see how our Lord and Savior is our Good Shepherd watching over us every single day. I invite you to take these truths that we learn from God's Word and apply it to your lives in the coming weeks and months um, coming forward. We continue with the opening hymn, hymn number 471, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. service for this evening is an adapted version of the service setting one found in the blue hymnal. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us.
Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word, that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Acts chapter 2, and here we see the early church was marked by devotion to the apostolic teaching and genuine love for one another, and the good shepherd's flock grew. They continued to hold firmly to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Awe came over every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They were selling their possessions and property, and they were distributing the proceeds according to what anyone needed. Day after day, with one mind, they were devoted to meeting in the temple area, as they continued to break bread in their homes. They shared their food with glad and sincere hearts, as they continued praising God and being viewed favorably by all the people. Day after day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. We continue next by singing the psalm, Psalm 23, uh, it's through hymn number 553, The Lord's My Shepherd.
second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2 and serves as the sermon text. For this is favorable. If a person endures sorrow while suffering unjustly because he is conscious of God, for what credit is it to you if you receive a beating for sinning and patiently endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it, this is favorable with God. Indeed, you are called to do this because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you would follow in his steps. He did not commit a sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself carried our sins in his body on the tree, so that we would be dead to sins and alive to righteousness. By his wounds you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but you are now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. The word of the Lord. We continue with the gospel acclamation and the gospel. Please stand. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Our gospel lesson for this evening comes from John chapter 10. And here we see that Jesus is not only our good shepherd, he is the gate through which we enter into the green pastures of salvation. Amen, amen, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the door, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens the door for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own sheep, he, he walks ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration in speaking to the people, but they did not understand what he was telling them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I tell you, I am the door for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robber, robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. At this time, we ask everyone to please fill out the attendance cards that can be found in the pew in front of you. Another option is to use the QR code found up on the screen or also in the bulletin. For those who are worshiping with us online, you can find a link above or below the video. Later on in the service, when the offering baskets are passed, please place those attendance cards in the baskets. Thank you for your cooperation. We continue with the next hymn, hymn number 552, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
peace are yours through our good shepherd and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's Good Shepherd Weekend, I guess you could call it, since it's Saturday, but tomorrow is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a season, a day in the church year where many of us look forward to. As we see such comforting words from God's Word before us today in our various lessons that we had. They're ones that are very popular at many different times. Our psalm, for example, one is probably the, one of the most, most popular sections of the Bible with Psalm 23. And they're so popular because we see this comfort and this hope and joy that we have in Christ Jesus as our good shepherd. In our first lesson from Acts, we see how Christians were living in love with one another there as they were living under that good shepherd, reflecting the love that he showed them where they knew he was watching over them, knew that he was taking care of them, so they were able to provide for one another. But as you look through these sections of Scripture that we have for today, you might find a couple of sections that might be a little bit hard to swallow. In our gospel lesson, what did we see happening? We see Jesus, our good shepherd there, him also as the door there, but we also see thieves and robbers trying to come in and trying to deceive the sheep and bring them away. The sheep being you and me. Psalm 23, that very popular psalm that's so often used during funerals and the like to bring comfort, but what do we see in there? But, well, that phrase that says this, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what picture does that put in your mind? Is it a picture perhaps like this that you see there up on the screen? It's not one of joy and hope, but maybe there's a picture there of walking through the valley of the shadow of death as you're walking through this valley of darkness where there's big mountains or cliffs on each side, some dark maybe storm clouds coming in. Maybe there were times in your life that you felt that way. And then in our epistle lesson, what does it say there? It has phrases like, endure sorrow while suffering unjustly. Enduring sorrow and suffering unjustly. Continuing there, it says, suffer for doing good. We have to suffer for doing good. And the section ends with, indeed, you were called to do this. Things that are maybe a little bit hard to swallow. Things that aren't painting this beautiful and good picture for us, but maybe a picture more like that's up on the screen here of darkness, where we're knowing that we're going to have hardship and trouble and sorrow in our lives. So this may lead us to ask the question then, What is it like to live under the care of the good shepherd? Is it one that's going to be truly good all the time, or will there be hardships in it? As many of you look at your lives, you look at your lives and realize, yeah, there are a lot of hardships in our lives, as we see in many of the verses before us today. And why do we go to many of those verses? Well, I alluded to a little bit here, but let me take Psalm 23. Where is Psalm 23 probably mostly heard is but during funeral services. Or at somebody's deathbed as it's very clear that God's going to call them home. So you go to them and you have Psalm 23 going to them to bring them comfort as they're going through that valley of the shadow of death. And also comforting those family members that are there as well. As you look at that moment in time, It probably looks like something kind of like that picture where there's darkness and there's sorrow that is surrounding it. And for many of you, you might use Psalm 23 for other times in your life. Times when, well, things aren't going quite your way. You're facing suffering and sorrow for one reason or another. Maybe it seems like things haven't gone your way. You're just really down, and you're trying, but nothing seems to be going right. And you may be wondering, Lord, I'm walking through this valley of the shadow of death. I'm going through all this trouble. I'm looking for you for hope here as I'm struggling through this. Maybe it's a time when you are unjustly mocked and ridiculed for something, or maybe very particularly your faith. So we go back to the question. What is it like to live under the care of of the good shepherd. Short way to look at it is, well, it's a life that is, has a lot of sorrow and hardship in it. It's a life where you and I are going to be insulted. 
where we're going to face sorrow and persecution for what we believe and have the effects of sin all around us making our life, well, really not that fun at times. We know that there's suffering in this life. All of us have gone through it in one extent or the other. And we know where this life eventually ends. Unless if Jesus returns before we die, it'll eventually end in death and we'll have family members mourning the loss of us that we're no longer here with them. As you look at our lives under the Good Shepherd as we're Christians here, you realize that our lives have the same struggles of everybody else on this earth, but in a way more, in harder struggles because of the faith that we have. Because the world rejects the faith that we have and we face persecution with it as well and we are unjustly ridiculed for our faith and for what we believe. And if we go off on our own with this, what will that lead us? It can lead us to the breaking point, can't we? Can't it? If we go and we try to handle this all on our own instead of going to the good shepherd, we'll be crushed and destroyed. As we have that picture of the good shepherd, what does the shepherd do? The shepherd goes and protects the sheep, right? But if a sheep goes away from that flock, goes away from the shepherd, off on its own, it's there, it's defenseless. Wild animals and thieves can come and destroy it and take it away forever. So we see the result if we're trying to do this on our own. As we face these struggles and as we face these trials in our life and the sorrow in our life, the question then is, well, how do we respond with it? If somebody is unjustly mocking you and making fun of you and calling, your, calling you names, how do you respond to that? How have you responded to someone in that situation? If someone, say, maybe at work seems to be trying to undermine you and bring you down no matter at what you do at every turn, how are you responding to that person? When you watch commercials on TV and see people saying things about, about people who believe the things that we believe and saying things like calling us extremists and the like, how do you respond to that? When people mock you and call you names, do you respond with anger and frustration? Or how about when death is approaching a loved one? Or maybe yourself one day? How do you respond? Do you there respond with anger and frustration towards God? In these situations, do you respond with anger and frustration to those who are acting this way and, and treating you unjustly? Do you even maybe go to the point of acting in hatred? For those who have wronged you, do you seek revenge for those who have harmed you and caused you to suffer something unjustly? And do you burn with anger and hatred? Or maybe... You seek to bring justice in yourself. We see that in society today, right? Where there's a wrong and society says, we need to get justice for this. We need to do everything that we can. If we believe there was some injustice and for, for some reason, we need to take it into our own hands to get back at this person to see Justin, justice the way we see it play out. Maybe it's the person who's calling you names or being mean to you and you decide to do that right back at them. Maybe it's the person who's undermining you and you think, you know what, I'm going to turn this around on them. I'm going to under start to undermine them at every single point. And if we do that, how do people see us? Do they see us as Jesus' sheep? Do they see us reflecting the love that Christ has shown us where we were those wayward sheep going away, fighting against him at every single point, but he still came and died for us? Or do they see us as just another person in this world acting the way they would expect somebody in this world to act? We realize that the life that we have on this earth is one that is full of difficulty, one that is full of sorrow, one that is indeed a hard one. You can say made even harder with the fact with what we believe is rejected by the world around us. It's by no means not a perfect life. But we look at this life with hope and joy. After all, it's Good Shepherd Sunday, and as we look at these verses that have some things that might be a little bit hard to swallow, we look at it with joy and hope. Why? Because we have Christ, the Good Shepherd, looking over us and watching over us. And what was he like? 
What was Christ the good shepherd like? Well, we have that before us in our lesson for today. It says, he endured sorrows while suffering unjustly because he was conscious of God. It continues, it says, he did not commit a sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. What was Jesus' life like on this earth? Jesus, who is God, who is perfect in every single way, came on this earth and he was mocked. The Jews continually tried to undermine his ministry and everything that he tried to do. He was insulted, made fun of, called names, and people were even plotting to kill him throughout his ministry with multiple plots there. Jesus himself saw the loss of loved ones. We see him going to the grave there, uh, the tomb there of Lazarus, where Jesus wept because his friend there had died. He raised him to life, but Lazarus would die someday, eventually be taken to heaven. And those plots against Jesus' life, how did that end? Well, see, God in his wisdom, he allowed one of those plots to come through according to his time as he used it in his plan of salvation. But had Jesus there arrested unjustly, mocked unjustly, beaten and sentenced to death unjustly. But how did he respond? He didn't respond the way you and I would respond with anger and frustration and hatred. We even see him, though, praying for the people that put him there. He wasn't going and seeking revenge on them, but he said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. We see grace and love flowing from him for them and to you and me. Why did he do this? Or well, a lesson here says it. Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you would follow in his steps. He did not commit a sin and no deceit was found in his mouth when he was insulted he did not insult in return. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He did not react to this unjust suffering and sorrow the way we so often react to it. He didn't react to it in the way that the world reacted to it, but he entrusted himself, any revenge that needed to be taken, and everything to God. For what reason? Our lesson tells us. It says, He himself carried our sins on his body on the tree, so that we would be dead to sins and alive to righteousness. By his wounds you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but you are now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Even though Jesus, out of anyone who was ever on this earth, had the most right to lash out and get revenge on these people. Why? Because he is God. He is perfect in every way. He is the only one who could say, yes, this is completely unjust for me, to, for this to be happening to me. I am perfect in every way. He didn't. He didn't because he is our good shepherd and was doing the will of his father. He was our good shepherd who saw the Father's plan and said, yes, I'm going to do this, and as the good shepherd, I'm going to lay my life down for the sheep, for you and me. He did this to defeat sin, death, and the devil, and he did this to fully complete God's plan of salvation, to bring us those wayward sheep, those sheep that were going astray, back to him, back to the sheepfold, so that we could be in heaven in with him. He did this to fix the problem of sin and heal in us the problem of sin that we have in our lives. And that changed us. That made something new. That made us look at this life and realize, yeah, it is a life that's full of hardship and sorrow, but we don't have to deal with it without hope and without joy and on our own. Because we have our good shepherd to look back on. We have our good shepherd who is watching over us, who is protecting us, who already defeated sin, death, and the devil. So we can look at the suffering that we face, especially that suffering for faith as we're suffering for Jesus Christ, suffering for God is something good. As our reading says, but if you suffer for doing good and endure it, this is favorable with God. The word favorable there is charis in Greek. It's the same word that we get the word grace from, where we see God's grace. Not there because we're trying, we're not suffering because we're trying to earn God's favor, but we're suffering because we're already part of his flock. So if you're persecuted, 
If you're facing sorrow because of your faith that somebody is causing problems for you in your life because of the faith you have, you can look at it and say, what a great and wonderful blessing here from God. I get to suffer for him. And as Jesus, as Jesus' sheep, we can look at the suffering with joy. Because when we react to it, the suffering and persecution and hardships in the way that Christ did, people will look at you and say, there's something different about this person. Why don't they react the way that I would react to this? Why aren't they trying to get revenge? Why are they without, why do they have hope at a point where it seems like they should not have any hope? Because we have the good shepherd watching over us. And what did that good shepherd do? He died on the cross for our sins. And we can point them to that. Because as we look at the good shepherd, where did he go? As we look at Psalm 23, the valley of the shadow of death there, he went there, didn't he? He went to that valley of the shadow of death, and he came out on the other side, not dead, but alive in every single way. Fully alive. Defeating sin, death, and devil once and for all. Well, how does that apply here? Well, all the hardship, all the sorrow, everything that you face in this life, what is the root cause of that? The root cause of that is sin, right? That wasn't in existence when God created the world. It wasn't until Adam and Eve fell into sin that sin entered, that all this sorrow, all this hardship came in. And there, Jesus, what did you do? He defeated the devil and sin and everything there on the cross. And he lives. Because of that, you and I will live. What that makes us realize is the hardships and everything that we face here on this earth is something that's transitory. It's here today and gone tomorrow. What remains is the life that we have in Christ, the good shepherd looking over us, watching over us, providing everything we need, providing for our salvation. And how does he do that? Well, he watches over us every single day, providing for our daily needs, but sends us his word. There in the Bible, there he, he sends us his word that it's everything that we needed for our faith to strengthen and grow it, grow our faith to better bear up against these, these hardships and sorrows that are in our life. And that frees us. Frees us from the weight of all those things that are pushing down on us. If we go to our first lesson again for, to there, the book of Acts, what do we see those Christians in the early church doing? The early church, can you kind of imagine that? It's the, just as the church was starting, it wasn't fully organized, and there were still a lot of the Jews. They, they really hated the Christians there. They saw not that long before they put Jesus to death. They're working together. Not looking at all these things that happened, not being there probably shunned from society somewhat as, well, this terrible bad thing and hiding in fear, but with joy and freedom and living together in harmony and peace and selling their things to help provide for their brothers and sisters in Christ who are, were in need. They weren't worrying what came the next day. They knew their good shepherd was watching over them, providing for their every single daily need. And they knew that no matter what happened on this earth, they would have heaven to look forward to as the good shepherd would take them there. You could say they were truly free. So what, was it, what is it like then to live under the care of the good shepherd in this life? Even though we see the har sorrow and hardship, it's not a life full of sorrow and sadness and hardship, but truly life and life in the full. As we look at these verses that do have some sad hearts, we realize they're full of such joy and such hope because the good shepherd is watching over us and has already defeated all those bad, terrible things that are there. We know he's providing everything that we need, everything for our salvation. Because we know that our good shepherd came and we know that he's watching over us, we know that we do truly have life and we have life abundantly as we look forward to that life in heaven. Amen. Please rise. We continue with confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose 
rose again from the dead. He yes. ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll collect our offerings of praise and thanksgiving to our Lord and Savior. Please also put those attendance cards in the offering baskets as they are passed. We love because he first loved us. As we're collecting the offering, we'll sing the next hymn, hymn number 730, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. for prayer. Loving shepherd of the sheep, fill us with contentment and confidence during this season as we celebrate your Easter victory. You laid down your life for the sheep and then rose again to assure us that you give us eternal life. Strengthen our faith to follow where you lead, to the green pastures of your word, the quiet waters of our baptism, and the gracious table of your body and blood where our cup overflows with your forgiving love. Guide us to find in you the gate that leads to safety and good pastures. Guard and protect us from those who want to lead us astray and snatch us out of your hand. Give us courage to fight against the devil and wisdom, wisdom to recognize false teachers. Lead us to honor and follow those you have called to shepherd your flock, the church. Let your rod and your staff comfort us and all your sheep in times of sickness and sadness, and especially when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. May we find in your redemption and your Father's resolve the unbreakable promise that we will dwell in your house forever. Move us to reach out to sheep who are not yet part of our sheep pen, but whom you have claimed as your own. Give us your passion to search for the sheep, who are lost, and lead us to rejoice when they have been found. Us. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We thank you for all the blessings we have gained from your goodness, family and friends, wealth and health, work and leisure, Give us wisdom to long for the, and cherish your, your more precious gifts, your word and sacraments, so that your goodness and love may follow us all the days of our life. 
You may be seated. We continue with the next hymn, hymn number 798, I Lay My Sins on Jesus. stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join in the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the closing hymn, hymn number 804, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb.
It's great to have you all in worship this evening. Um, a number of announcements then. Uh, tomorrow, as we're looking at that schedule, uh, between the services, we'll have our, our Sunday school between the services and also Bible class across the street with refreshments there. Um, we're starting a new Bible study, um, one um, helping or hope for those who are, are going through a hard time, um, basically then. So we'd love to, to have you come in for that then as we're starting a brand new one. Um, also down in the council chambers, we'll be having our our, um, excuse me, lost my train of thought there, our youth league Bible study there as usual as well. And Wednesday Bible study um, continues there, and the council chambers are looking at predestination then. Uh, this week, there's a staff appreciation, so as you come in in both entrances, you can find uh, boxes there. If you like to put uh, a card um, to, to go to the staff there, um, please uh, make use of those then. Um, also, preschool, grade two, spring concerts coming up this week on May the 4th and at 6 to 7 p.m. in the school gymnasium. Next weekend, we're looking forward to confirmation where there'll be a rehearsal uh, on May 4th, examination on May 5th at 7 p.m. with the, the confirmation service at 10.30 on May 7th then. So looking forward to confirmation weekend next weekend. Uh, please note that our art, outdoor service and picnic will be June 11th at 10 a.m. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet if you would like to help in some way. You can find more information in the bulletin on that. And also, VBS registration is open, and we're less than a month in uh, or left of that. So if you look on in the bulletin, you can find information there where to register. Uh, the cutoff, if you want a shirt, would be May 25th, the last day of school then. So um, please sign up uh, if, you're if your kids are going to be going and register. That way we get a better count of how many will be there. And um, then if you get before that date, you, um, you're guaranteed a shirt then as well. Um, so um, please continue to fill that that in. Um, and also we need uh, volunteers. We need about seven more volunteers for that as well. There's more information in the bulletin and that too. We have a letter from Lisa Kieselhorst who we called to be our first grade teacher and it says, um, dear members of St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, since April 11th when I was called by St. John's congregation, I have sought the Lord's guidance and direction to determine his will. After prayerful deliberation and consultation with others, I'm excited to tell you that I would be pleased and honored to serve your congregation and its little lambs as first grade teacher and coach at St. John's Lutheran School. I ask you for your continued prayers as my family and I work to meet the challenges of this new ministry. I'm extremely excited about the work that lies ahead for me. Together with you and the wonderful St. John's faculty and staff, I can't wait to begin to import the important work of sharing your precious Lord and our precious Lord and Savior with the children of St. John's Lutheran School. Thank you for your prayers, emails, meetings, and phone calls of encouragement. Your regular contact was much appreciated. I'm looking forward to joining the Christ Center Joy Filled Ministry at St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church and School. In his service, Lisa Kieselhorse. So, um, wonderful news there. Uh, this is probably the first time in two years I can say we are fully staffed. There's no more call meetings or anything coming up. So the Lord has certainly blessed us there and we give him praise and thanksgiving for that. Those are all the announcements. Before we go, we haven't had one in a while, but we have a marriage moments video, a brief video um, that we'll view. And then the Lord bless your week. Hello, and welcome to Marriage Moments. Hope is an incredibly powerful thing, isn't it? Most of us can put up with almost anything if we know that there's some hope, particularly if it's a big hope, which is out in front of us. Well, brothers and sisters, you have the most amazing hope of all that is out in front of you and that's the real hope that God is going to take you to heaven someday. He pictures his believers in heaven as being clothed in white robes. They're pure and they're holding palm branches in their hands. That's a sign of either victory or royalty. And can you imagine someday you are going to be there because Jesus died and rose for you. And so husbands, wives, what an incredible honor you have that you get to encourage one another on your journey to heaven. Can you imagine the blessings that you will share 
as you remind each other of the hope that you have, that someday you're going to have eternal life with Jesus in heaven. That truth will fill your marriage with hope every single day of your life. And that's a moment for your marriage. <laughs>